Hi, and welcome to the Running Methods Teach It Tuesday. My name is Felicia Garman, also known as Rogue Fibers on all the social medias, and this is the fourth installment of the series. This month, we're talking about worsted yarns. So I'll be taking a couple of different fibers prepared in a combination of ways on a comb and hackle and spinning them into worsted yarns. I'll also prepare a few samples using the technique shown in episode three so that you can see the difference between a more processed and a less processed fiber. Hopefully, this will help you see what you can expect out of your writing method dye pots. I've laid out all of the materials we will need for this class. From left to right, we have Masham, Wensleydale, and Easydale. I'm starting off with the Masham simply by separating the locks from the bunch. I'm not doing any other type of fiber prep and then loading up the combs. So you can see they still have their lock structure, they still have that um, compactness near the tip, and I'm just simply going to brush my comb along the tip end working through the fibers. All of these fibers I purchased from the Maste Farms. They're super clean, really high quality, low VM, low dirt, um, just really wonderful to work with. So I am going to do two passes. The first pass you're seeing right now, I'm going to then transfer all of the fibers back onto the combs and repeat those two steps. So for a total of four passes with these fibers. If we were not doing this today, I would probably stick with simply spinning all of these fibers from the lock. They're absolutely beautiful, really wonderful to work with. They're easy to separate. Masham is a, an amazing yarn to, to fiber to work with actually. So this is after the first pass and here we go with the second pass. You can kind of see already how these fibers don't really, uh, won't really blend a whole lot more than what we've got because each of these locks have the same colors uh, running right along through them from tip to, to cut end, uh, two different colored greens, two different color blues. So there's really not a whole lot of reason to do more than four passes. You can see this really made a beautiful little cloud of fiber that I'm going to spin directly off of the comb. So we're moving over to my spinning wheel, Drusilla. There's my dog, Shiloh. He always likes to get involved when I'm on my wheel. All of my video clips are at four times speed because I am a very slow fiber processor, slow spinner. Um, so hopefully you can see I'm just uh, working these fibers just like I would if I had a comb top or a roving and, um, and spinning them uh, onto, onto my wheel. I just want to get as much of the fiber off of the comb as possible and then I'm going to ply it in a two ply so we have our finished yarn. Next we'll work with the Wensleydale and I am going to just fluff up the the cut ends a little bit. I have very um, widely spaced tines. I do not have a fine comb and hackle set. My comb and hackle set came from Blue Mountain Fiber Arts. They custom made this for me and I'm just going to load up all of these fibers onto the hackle. I thought I would do a little bit of color blocking to see what, what the difference would be in the yarn, the final finished yarn that we would get. When I first started dyeing with um, the running method, it was a bit overwhelming to me to see all of these really beautiful locks that had a bunch of different colors on them. It's a completely different animal than having a braid or a, a roving because you kind of get a feel really quickly for how the, the colors will blend when you're spinning and how the fibers will separate out because they're much shorter in length than these which are about nine inches I would say that the first two fibers are about nine inches long. So I've done four passes with this uh, Wensleydale fiber and you see it made this really lovely kind of a silvery blue color. Uh, and I'm going to diz it off. I got my diz uh, set from the Clay Sheep on Etsy. And I'm just going to make a little um, combed top 
balls. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what those are called. So my little um, little balls of comb top and spinning on uh, Drusilla again. Oh, I'm sorry, Drusilla is my wheel. <laughs> uh, um, who else names their wheel? I, I love her so much. She's my favorite. Uh, I just thought I would get a different angle. You can see there's, there are distinct uh, color variations within this uh, singles yarn, but the overall effect is going to be this really lovely shimmery mermaidy blue. All of the final five uh, yarns are in a two ply. So we have our Masham. This was came off the combs. I lock spun. And then we have our Wensleydale. And there's another fiber in there. This came off of the comb and hackle set. It's really silvery blue. This was a lock spun fiber. And I, I did that with each of these. Um, these locks so you can see the difference between a more processed fiber and one that was uh, that was fun using the techniques from the last uh, Teach It Tuesday class. This Easy Dale is so wonderful to work with. It's very much like a merino or another finer uh, style of fiber and I only did two passes onto the comb and then back onto the hackle. Again, this all of these yarns, I or I'm mean, sorry, all of these fibers, I would definitely prefer spinning straight from the lock. They are absolutely wonderful, dreamy to work with. Um, so you can see there's a little bit um, more blending going on with uh, the shorter fibers. They didn't get all of the the colors on each of the locks, uh, which is totally fine. I pull it off into this little cloud and I'm going to spin straight from that. It works just like a bat or um, or a combed top in, in that sense. I lost that video clip showing spinning in that style, so I do have a little clip of me spinning straight from the lock. I'm simply um, separating out the, the tip end and the, the shorn end and then um, running my hands lengthwise across the staple of the fiber. That gives me a feel for how much uh, of a staple length I'm going to be working with, what my draft should be, but then it also gets uh, all that webby goodness uh, lined back up for the worsted yarn that I want to have. I'm just going to continue um, spinning straight from the lock and I'll make a um, a two-ply yarn from that. What was really interesting to me about the Easy Dale was that both the the combed processing and the fiber that I spun straight from the lock look very similar. I tried to get a little bit more of this blue in the yarn so that you could see the same t type of color variation that we got from the other two fibers, but my mind's eye showed the same result from both methods. Here are all of our fibers one last time. From left to right you can see the, the lock, the combed processing, and the fiber spun. Thank you for joining me today. If you found this video useful, please give us a thumbs up and in the comments below share what you've done with your newly dyed fibers out of the pot. Do you prefer worsted yarn or do you prefer art yarns? If you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. You can also follow me on all the social medias as Rogue Fibers. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.